Welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Lightbox Story Hour with Adam Wilton. This is Virtual Excel Academy. We are so excited to have you. We're here hosted by Leanne Grillet from APH. Hi, Leanne. Hello, everyone. And also Charlotte Cushman from Perkins and Texas School for the Blind. Hi, everyone. And those of you who are joining us from home, we would love to know who you are and where you're from. And maybe if you could tell us one thing that you think is beautiful today. For me, I can look out outside my window and I see the sunshine and I see really big black clouds behind the sunshine. I think it might rain. Maybe there will be a rainbow. Wouldn't that be special and beautiful today? What's beautiful in your area? Blue sky, hello from North Carolina. Blue sky again, Texas, Georgia, welcome. It's spring break, that's beautiful. Sunny and pleasant by the lake. Oh, the daffodils must be so pretty. And the woodpeckers must sound so gorgeous. Birds outside on the porch. Colorado weather and Calgary. Welcome all of our friends from all over the world. We are excited to have Adam join us today. And he has some very special stories. If you all would like to join us and enjoy those stories as well. Thank you, Adam. All right, thank you, Cheryl. I am just going to start sharing my screen and then we'll get going. While Adam is getting ready, I would like to say welcome again to everybody who has joined us. This is a session for children and it will start with children. At the end, because we know children have a shorter attention span, we will then introduce what's going to happen net tomorrow and then we will stop and answer any adult questions that they might have, including about the availability of the light box for APH. Okay, it's all yours, Adam. Thank you very much, Leanne, and welcome everyone. I'm so delighted to be with you all today. We're gonna to share some stories together. And as Leanne mentioned, we'll have time for questions later on. Before we get going though, just a few quick notes to parents, guardians, um, and educators who are attending with us today. Um, so we've, all, we've, done, we've already done a quick introduction. Um, and I'm just going to cover a few quick notes before we get started on our story. So we've got four stories today. Um, Two of them will be via screen share, one of them on a light box, and one of them will be with a pop-up book and a camera. Um, now, the reason I tell you this is for positioning sake. And so if you need to position the screen closer or further um, from the uh, student that, or the, the student or child that you're with, um, we'll have breaks to do that throughout the time. And that's why I've got um, short repositioning or movement breaks set after each story. Um, it works two ways. One, I need a chance to do some set changes here. Um, and then it also works so that if you need to adjust positioning or seating um, between stories um, to make uh, uh, the student or child even more, com more comfortable or um, uh, so that they can better uh, follow along with the story, we'll have time for that. Um, so just a quick note, um, this is a nice opportunity for those parents and guardians who are at home to maybe get to know a little bit more about your child's vision. Um, so I do want to mention that this presentation is geared to students with more complex profiles that includes visual impairment and none of this content is developed with a particular ocular or neurologically based condition in mind. Really what I've done here is adapted these on four key dimensions, um, color, contrast, size, and movement. And so throughout, while we read, watch for um, how your child reacts to changes in those features, either changes in color or size or uh, movement. Um, watch for 
watch for what they're what they're enjoying. What what are they what are they paying attention to? What are they not paying attention to? What are they following? Are they following any of the movement? What kinds of movement are they following? Um, and watch to see how long it takes for them to um, direct their vision at um, at the target on the screen or what's or the the, the picture on the screen. Um, now I should say that because we're a large group and because we have a limited amount of time, I'm not necessarily providing as much wait time as I normally would when working with students on a lightbox story. Um, but uh, some, that's something we can talk about later on. Um, and as I mentioned at each break, um, please reposition the student or the display as necessary. Um, for kind of optimal and comfy viewing. Okay, so I'm gonna take a quick, we don't actually need to do two minutes. I think we can maybe just do one minute um, for you to uh, get into position and get comfy. And then we'll start with our first story, which will be the Feel Good Book by Todd Parr. So I'll give you just a few, just a minute to get to get situated, get get as close to the screen as you need to be, get the screen positioned where you need it to be um, so that we can get started. And Adam, you are projecting the light box on the screen, so they don't need their own light box. They just need no, to see the screen. Absolutely. So as I, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have four stories. One of them will be on a live light box here with me in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Um, and so no, uh, I've got all the light boxes that we all need for right here. Okay, why don't we get started? I'm so excited to share this first story with all of you. This is the Feel Good book and the author and illustrator is Todd Parr. Okay, and what I will do throughout is provide a short description um, of the image um, as we go along. Okay, the feel good book. Giving a great big hug feels good. Ooh, there's the hug page. And there's a young lady with pink hair moving across the screen. Eating carrots with a bunny feels good. Mm, I wonder if any of you have ever eaten carrots with a bunny before. Getting tickled feels good. And there's a picture of a dog on his back and someone's rubbing his tummy. Taking a bubble bath feels good. And so we see some rubber duckies pop onto the screen. I know sometimes when I take a bath, I have my rubber ducky. Showing the new kid around feels good. And in this case, it looks like the new kid is from another planet because we see five stars, one, two, three, four, five across the screen. And then a girl in a spaceship with an alien. Rubbing noses feels good. So you've got two fish coming together to touch noses. Visiting a sick friend feels good. So here we've got a friend bringing us a flower when we're not feeling well. And that makes us feel good. Crying when you're sad can feel good. And here's a crocodile and he looks like he's just having a good cry. You can see him moving along the bottom of the screen. Laughing out loud feels good. Ha 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 ha. And here we see someone with long hair and a striped shirt laughing out loud. And boy, does that feel good. Brushing your hair with a lion feels good. I'm not sure how many of us have ever brushed our hair with a lion, but it must feel good. Catching snowflakes on your tongue feels good. And there's a boy with a scarf and a coat and some snow pants on, and he's moving across the screen and he's tasting snowflakes on his tongue.
Reading a book under a tree feels good. And there's a little bookworm reading a book underneath a tree moving across our screen. I hope it's as good a book as this one. Watching your grandma and grandpa dance feel good. And there's a, gra a grandmother and a grandfather jumping up and down and having a great old time feeling good while dancing. Having a ladybug land on your hand feels good. And there's a girl with a ladybug, a happy little ladybug sitting right there on her hand. Do you see it? It's got yellow wings. Sharing your treats feels good. And there's a dog and a cat coming together. I wonder what kind of treat a dog and a cat would share. A bone maybe? Hmm, I'm not sure. Waiting for the tooth fairy feels good and there's a picture of a girl and she's asleep in her bed and then the tooth fairy flies in. I wonder what the tooth fairy is going to leave. And I wonder if the tooth fairy's ever visited any of you. Saying I love you in sign language feels good. And there's a picture of a boy and he's saying I love you in sign language and there are hearts spreading all over the screen. Let's see, how many hearts are there? One, two, three, four hearts. Playing under the sprinkler feels good. And in this case, the sprinkler is an elephant a big pink elephant. And then we see a little girl in a bathing suit playing in the water. Making a new friend feels good. And here, a friend, one friend is a pig and the other friend is a skunk and they're holding hands. And there they are moving across the screen. I forgot they were going to do a little dance for us. <sighs> Making monkey sounds feels good. <laughs> and on the screen we see a, a, there's a girl and a monkey and they're both look like they're making that sound. <laughs> Letting a kitten lick your fingers feels good. And so we see a blue Kit Kat and the Kit Kat is licking a hand right there in the middle of the screen. Oh, this is a funny one. Brushing your teeth with strawberry toothpaste feels good. Mmm, strawberry toothpaste sounds delicious. I bet that does feel good. And here we see a boy and he's got a toothbrush and there's lots of foamy pink toothpaste in his mouth. And I think we can assume that that is strawberry flavored toothpaste. Learning how to count to eight with a spider feels good. Let's count along with the spider. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The spider has eight legs and we've counted all of her legs.
whispering in someone's ear feels good. And then we see little penguins coming down in a row so that they can stand on each other's head and whisper into the tall giraffe's ear. Being brave feels good. And we see a superhero shooting across the screen and he's wearing a cape and a mask and a shirt with a star on it because he's a superstar and he's feeling good. And finally, being together feels good. And we have got two owls and they're sitting in a tree and they're together and they look pretty happy to me. And many of us are together with our families at home right now. So we're just feeling good like these owls on the screen. And I'll read you the, the Todd Parr, the author's send off here. It feels good to think about all the things that make you feel good. Rubbing my dog's tummy makes me feel good, and him too. What things make you feel good? Love, Todd. And that's the end of our story. Now I've got another story to share with you. But what we're going to do is take a quick... Oh, where is it? There we go, the end. So we're going to take a quick break just to reposition, reset, and maybe get a quick snack if you've, if you've got one handy. Um, and we'll get we'll come back together in no more um, than three minutes. And I love that Charlotte says sunshine makes me feel good. And Susan says sunshine makes me feel good too. What makes you feel good? I have a little unicorn in the room here. My daughter is dressed as a unicorn and I love hugging my little unicorn friend. What makes you feel good? Sunshine makes me feel good. You may type in the chat box as we're waiting for Adam to transition and you are getting repositioned and maybe getting a snack. Smiles make me feel good. Walking makes me feel good. Riding my bike makes me feel good. My family and my friends. Hugging my daughter makes me feel good too. Being with my family, Listening to you guys makes me feel good. Eating cookies. I love cookies too. Keep those ideas coming. We will be able to monitor them and we'll give the microphone back to Adam to let him finish story number two. Wonderful. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, I'm just going to switch my camera here very quickly. Okay, there is our video. And I'm just going to ask either Charlotte or Leanne to let me know if that's coming through okay. The bottom of the house is slightly cut off and okay. we'll need to make sure you stay near your microphone so we can hear you. Definitely, thank you. Okay, fabulous. All right, welcome back everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed that story by Todd Parr. You know, I really enjoy his books so much that I have another one to share with you all later on. But right now we're going to read another of my favorites and this story is called Going on a Bear Hunt. This is a book uh, retold by Suzette Wright and it is normally a, um, a print braille book that, uh, that I really enjoy, but, what, but here, we're gonna enjoy it on the light box. Okay, now, you, guess what? You're all in this story. You're all, our friend here, our, well, our, our purple, but I think that looks more blue to all of you. Okay, we're going on a bear hunt. It's here. Today is the day. We're going on a bear hunt. 
Ready? Open the door. Oh, there's the doors open. Okay, let's go. All right, so we're going on a bear hunt, gang. This is so exciting. Uh-oh, tall, waving grass. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. We have to go through it. Swish, 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 swish. Swish, 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 swish. Stop. Oh. Do you see any bears? Hmm, no, sir. Okay, let's go. Swish, swish. All right, here we are. Uh-oh, a big wide river. Can't go over it, can't go under it. Have to swim it. Splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splash. <gasps> Stop. Do you see any bears? Are there any bears near you? No, sir. Okay, let's go. Oh, a mushy, muddy marsh. Oh, goodness, look at that. Squishing around there. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Have to go through it. Squish, squish. No, sir. Okay, let's go. Uh oh, a deep, dark woods. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Have to go through it. Stumble, bump, stumble, bump, and crunch. Do you hear that? Do you see any bears? Mm. No, sir, I can't see anything. Okay, let's go. Crunch, 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 crunch. All right. Slippery snow, uh-oh. And we can't go over it, and we certainly can't go under it. We've got to go through it. Do you see any bears? Ooh, it's cold in here. I don't see any bears, no sir. Okay, let's go. Uh-oh, a dark cave. A dark cave, ooh. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Let's look inside. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Let's look inside. Wait a minute. What's this? 
Mm, what do you think is in the cave? I wonder. I wonder what's in the cave. Fern, big eyes, sharp teeth. <gasps> it's a big bear. Oh my goodness. Look at that big bear with his big fuzzy fur and big eyes and soft nose and rah, 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 sharp teeth. <gasps> We've got to get out of the cave. Oh, tiptoe, tiptoe. Oh, and the bear is following. Into the snow. Into the woods. Through the mud. Squish, squish. Squish, 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 squish. Hello? Does anyone remember what comes, comes next in our journey? Oh, we have to get across the river. Splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splash. And after the river comes the tall grass. Splish, 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 splish. To get through the tall grass. <gasps> okay. I remember, if I remember, that means we're getting close to home. If we're getting through the tall grass, and through the mud, and through the forest. Sorry, everyone. I've just lost my house. <gasps> All right. We're back at home. We can open the door and jump inside. Be sure to lock that door. All right, where's the safest place we can be? Let's jump un into the bed. Into the bed and get under the covers. Whew, we're safe. Thank goodness. No more bear hunts ever again. Ha. And that is the end of our story about bear hunts. So, yeah. the end. All right, let's take another couple of if minutes. If you flip your the sign over, it's in oh, reverse. Thank you for letting me know. Fabulous. There we go. The end. All right, let's take a few minute break to reset, to reposition, and grab a snack. And we'll be back for our next story in just a few minutes. I love the bear hunt. That was wonderful. I think my favorite part was the squishy, squishy mud. What fun it would be to squish in the mud with some big, tall, rubber rain boots. What was your favorite part of the story? Susan says the mud. Darcy says the leaves. The, the snow. Adam's narrating. He is a wonderful narrating. Michael says the bear. Jane says the safest place in the house. Susan liked the grass. Lots of people liked the grass and the narrating and the crunchy leaves. 
I love the comments. Keep them coming. We'll let you finish your snack and give Adam a second to transition. And then we'll hear our third surprise story. Every story is a surprise and it's so much fun to hear them. Thank you, Adam, for sharing. Oh, it's my pleasure, Cheryl. I'm so glad we could do this. You know, it's funny. I wish you could all see. I've got grass and leaves and all kinds of fun stuff around me right now. It looks like a little fun tornado blew through. All right. So I'm, what I'm going to do, everyone, is I'm just going to um, move the light box away. Um, and I'm going to share a pop-up book with you. And this pop-up book is called The Happy Little Yellow Box. So I'm going to take the light box and I'm going to move it down. Okay. And then I am just going to stand here and show you. Oh, my sleeves are up. Aha. There we go. I'm going to show you. Oh, I'm going to turn just for one second. the happy little yellow box. And the author of this story is David Carter. Outside and inside, the happy little yellow box. And there's a yellow, yellow box there. And then there's a red box inside of that box. And then there's a blue box inside that box. I wonder how many boxes we've got here. And inside the blue box, there's a white box. And inside the white box, there's a mouse. Beep, 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 beep. My goodness, that was a surprise in the little yellow box. High and low with the little yellow box. And you can see the Little yellow box is a helicopter now. Flying through the sky. And I see some clouds in the sky right up there with this fly, this high flying helicopter. I wonder what the little yellow box is going to be next. Up and down with the happy little yellow box. And here we see the yellow box on the top of a tall building. And he goes right down to the bottom. And then he can come right back up. I wonder if any of you are like the happy little yellow box on this page and live in buildings as well. What fun. Up and down. Oh, sorry. Down and up. There we go. Near and far with the little yellow box. So here we see the little yellow box is inside of a house. And then if I pull this handy dandy little tab here, now he's moved all the way into this little house in the distance here. So he's near right here. And then he's far. Look at that. What a fun book. All right, I'm going to put him back in his big house there. in and out of the happy little yellow box. Here, the little yellow box is actually quite a much bigger yellow box and he's on a truck. And let's see what's inside of the little yellow box here. Some horses. <laughs> There's some horses riding along in the little yellow box. open and close the happy little yellow box. So here we're closed, the door is closed. So the little yellow box here is like a garage door. And let's open it up and see what's inside. Oh, it looks like a truck or a fire truck inside. The little yellow box is a door. Open, open the door. There's the fire truck, close the door, there's our friend, the little yellow box. Off and on with the happy little yellow box. 
Now this is interesting. This is another building. And if I, and we, we see all of the windows in the building are black right now. Like the curtains are closed and there's no one home. But if I pull this little tab, oh, look at that. There's a little yellow box on every floor in every window. My goodness, that's a, that's a house. That's sorry, that's an apartment building full of happy little yellow boxes. And then if I push this tab back up, they all go home. They all go inside for the night. Large and small with the happy little yellow boxes. Now this is interesting because see this has popped up. And if I open this little door inside of the big box, ah, look at that. There's a little one inside. We've got a big yellow box and a little yellow box. What fun in this book about the happy little yellow boxes. Okay, gang, that was The Happy Little Yellow Box by David Carter. I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna bring up the light box again because we're gonna take another, this break is gonna be very short or shorter that's the end of that story, and I'm going to go back to my computer. So we'll see you in a minute or two. Thank you again, Adam. Our sign is backwards if you're able to flip the plastic. Perfect. The end three minute break to reset, to reposition, and to snack. And as we give Adam a moment to transition here, I wonder for those of you at home if you had a yellow box could be any size, big or small. What would you like to find in your yellow box? Let me think about that for a moment. I think a puppy is what I would like to have in my yellow box. What about you? Christian says a new computer, a cure, a chocolate chip cookie, a peep, hot food. I'd like to find a flower. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Thank you, Charlotte, for sharing. If you have any ideas, pop them in that chat window. A unicorn? Oh, money. A million dollars. A, a great book. A lot of, uh, we are having a lot of comments, Adam, that they, the participants really enjoy this book. I'm glad they do, Cheryl. Yeah. That's All right. Keep those comments coming. And Adam, I'll yeah. turn it back to you. Thank you. Okay. Our next book is on, uh, is on the computer screen. And so I'm going to share that with everyone in just a moment. I'm going to, oh, there we go. All righty. This book is another by our friend Todd Parr, and this is the Don't Worry book. Good. Okay. The Don't Worry book by Todd Parr. Sometimes you worry, and we see a little bear, and he's tucked in bed, and he might be worrying about something. Oh. Worrying happens when you think too much about a problem or feel afraid that something bad is going to happen. And we see someone in the bottom corner who's doing a bit of spinning and there, she's got kind of a worried look on her face and she's touched, she's holding her, her chin. Hmm, I wonder what she's worried about. You might worry when you meet someone for the first time. Like a bat with polka dot wings that's just come down from the top of the screen. You might worry Mmm, when someone is being mean. And there's a boy on the screen who's got his tongue sticking out and he's got a look on his face like he's not being very nice right now. A 
you might worry when it's dark. Oh, and there's some eyes looking at us in the dark. I wonder whose eyes those are. Maybe it's that lion whose hair we were brushing earlier. You might worry when you're trying to sleep. Maybe some of you count sheep when you're trying to fall asleep. And here on the screen, we see one, two, three sheep. Two of them are white sheep and one of them is black. You might worry when you go somewhere new. And so here we see an airplane shooting across the screen. You might worry when you're alone, just like this little dog. He's not looking very happy right now. He looks like he's kind of alone. Hmm. You might worry when you have too much to do. My goodness, and here's someone who's juggling balls in the air. She's very busy. How many balls is she juggling? One, two, three, four. That's a lot of balls to be juggling at one time. My goodness. You might worry when it rains. And here's two people at the window looking outside. Hmm, I wonder if it's raining where they are. And then we see a big dark rain cloud, just like the ones, the big dark clouds that Cheryl told us were near her where she lives. You might worry when you get sick or have to go to the doctor. And there's a doctor who's smiling to help us make, to help us feel better. And there she is, zipping across our screen. You might worry when you look at screens too much, and that might be a worry for some people since we've been home quite a bit and using a lot of our screens. It's good to take a break. And here we see a picture of a young girl holding a holding what looks like maybe a phone or an iPad, and she's looking a little confused. You might worry when someone is being loud. Bark! Bark or woof, woof! Can you guess what animal we've got on the screen right now? If you guessed a dog, you're right. We've got a loud barking dog. Ruff, ruff, bark, 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 bark. Oh. Or, or when you go to school, some of us might get worried when we go to school. And here's a little guy who's going to school with his bag. And he looks, he looks a little worried going to school. Or when you overhear some bad news. And in this case, I think the bad news is that there are alien ships in the sky. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's just someone showing the new kid around, if you remember from our first story. Worrying can make you sad. And here we have a picture of a young person with long hair and they're crying. Oh my. When you worry, try to keep yourself busy, like talking to someone special. And there's a smiling young person and uh, she's talking to her pet fish in a fish bowl. And that fish looks like he's got lots to say. When you, when you worry, you can take deep breaths. Oh, sorry.
Ah, here we see someone who's looking up and smiling at the big blue, the great big blue clouds in the sky. You can visit friends. Hey, there's that, there's that pig and that skunk from our last story. Looks like they're still friends. And we see the pig and the skunk still holding hands. Here they come. When you worry, you might try wearing underwear on your head. Oh my, that's silly. Just like this dog. We see a dog on the screen who's just come up from the bottom and he's wearing a pair of polka dot shorts on his head. That's one way to do it. When you worry, you might try doing what we're doing right now and reading a book. And here's a, on the, Here's a picture of someone reading a book coming onto our screen. When you worry, you might try dancing. Oh yeah. And there's, woo, there's a, someone working their way across the screen there, dancing. When you worry, you might try exercising. And here's a happy little dog balancing on a ball. That's one way to exercise for sure. When you're worried, you might try squeezing a toy. There's that little dog from before who was feeling kind of alone, but now he looks like he's feeling a lot better that he has a friend. And he's squeezing that toy, squeak, 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 squeak. Ah, here he comes in again. Boy, he just really wants to show us that toy. When we worry, we can think about all of the things that make us strong. And here's a superhero that's flying into our screen. And she's got bows in her hair and a red cape. And she's wearing a blue, a blue suit with a star. So she looks like a superhero. And we also have to remember everyone who loves and takes care of you. And there's someone on the screen there giving a thumbs up. Okay, I'm gonna read you Todd's message here. Worrying doesn't help. If you are worried, talk to someone you love about it. It will make you feel better. The end. Love, Todd. Okay. And that's the end of our story. I'm just going to stop the screen share. There we go. Fabulous. Now, I know we're getting close close to the end. And so Cheryl and um, Charlotte, do you think we could um, do some questions? Absolutely. They have been flying around in the chat window this whole time. So folks at home, some of you have asked, has this book been converted into a PowerPoint? Let me turn my, let me. You, uh, you, sorry, let me change so you can see me. Hi. <laughs> we love um, that, Adam. Lots of people <laughs> typing in the chat box how much they loved it. So, oh, yes, we have lots of questions. So the, the question about the PowerPoint is um, yes. So what I did in that sense, because these books by Todd Parr are actually already pretty, um, pretty uh, low complexity. They're pretty simple already, but in some, some situations I need to, to make them a little simpler and have just one focal element, one image. And so in that case, what I did was uh, scan the book, made some images, um, and then what I will likely do I want uh, is add a narration to it. And then we've got an alternate format version of, um, of the Don't Worry book or the Feel Good book. So yes, that was a PowerPoint in, in both of those cases. Great. Another question. How big is the light box or can you compare it to something? Oh, it's just, uh, let me see if I can pull it out here for you all. Um, it's just, a, it's a standard APH light box. Um, let me, 
These are some students who are blind who are asking that. Oh, sure. So the light yeah. box is a great point. So the light box is about the size of two medium pizza boxes sitting together on a table. Um, I guess I just kind of took my hand there that I often think about the world in terms of pizza. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's about two, two medium sized pizza boxes sitting together. Um, and in this case, we, I wasn't showing the entire screen of the light box um, just because of the camera setup that I have. There are so many questions coming in. I don't know that we'll get through them all, but Adam, a lot of people would love to have access to this. So maybe you and I could be in touch offline sure. about putting sure. them on pads to literacy sure. where people yeah. could maybe have, have access. Uh, the permissions are something we need to yes. uh, check I could, out. So. I could address that if just we have a, a quick second. Um, so the the adaptations piece, well, here in Canada, we have a similar copyright law to the United States. And um, the adaptation piece comes, comes into play um, when the book is not available commercially in a format that your student requires. Um, and so in this case, um, so here in where I live in British Columbia, um, we have uh, narrated PowerPoint, bo narr narrated books in PowerPoint format um, that students can, um, can navigate using, let's say, a switch. Um, and we can do that because they are not, uh, we, we couldn't go to a store and purchase a book in that, that same book in that format. Yeah. And so Charlotte, we can talk definitely about yes, how we'll we can do that. Yes, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, story number two, you were using the actual light box and people yes. loved the materials you used, but they would like to know what materials you used for such things as the grass and how you made the large pictures like the bed and the bear. Oh, those, so those are, that's actually an old trick. Um, <laughs> I found a store that still sold transparencies. And here, let me, like, I just, I find they're just regular transparencies. Um, now, I had to make sure, though, that I purchased the ones that you can use with whatever printer you're using. So these aren't just regular transparencies. This, they have a little coating on them that lets you use a, a, them with a laser printer. And so that's, that's how I did those. Um, and then the other materials are mostly just homemade, except those of you with a keen eye will notice that the mud was actually an APH swirly mat. <laughs> so we have a question about how you use the camera. Uh, was it just a regular camera from your laptop? It's actually just a document camera. Um, it's just a regular document camera that I've managed to kind of work into a configuration that will let me look at something dead on. Most document cameras are straight on. Most document cameras are set to look down, um, but I managed to figure out a solution to get it to, to, to point forward. That's great. Uh, another question came in, what's your favorite way to isolate parts of a picture or basically how are you cutting out those different pictures from the top part box? Um, well, for the most part, it's pretty easy to do to isolate any image um, nowadays. Uh, I'm using a Windows-based platform. Um, there is a, um, there's Microsoft Paint, and then they've introduced something called Paint 3D. And Paint 3D has a magic snip tool where it will try to guess what it wants to snip out. Like, you'll, you'll tell it to snip. And then what you do is just correct it in case it's accidentally either over or under snipped. And then that's how I um, remove a, a, a foreground image from its background. And that just comes standard on Windows 10. Well, there, Adam, are, there are lots of tools out there to, to accomplish the same thing. Thank you. I think you have a lot of fans out there. I think it's uh, worthy of a YouTube channel. You almost <laughs> create your own forum. <laughs> well, I have a lot of cool stuff. Well, not a lot. I don't. I share a lot of cool stuff on Twitter. I can't take credit for most of it. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Maybe some of the students. Do you have any questions? Oh, what well, is you, Twitter was account gonna... name? Yeah, what is your Twitter account name? And then you have oh, tons yeah. of compliments of your, your narration skills. Oh, well, thank you. Um, so on Twitter, I'm the at sign TVI underscore Adam. Sorry, I just drew it in. The, <laughs> I just wrote it in the air for you. <laughs> I'll put and it, Adam, thank you, Cheryl. A, a lot of people have questions about how you created this and there's a lot of information. Again, maybe uh, you and I might be able to connect yeah, again. Definitely. You've been so 
generous sharing on pest literacy in the past. So that's a great way to get information out. And as we've said many times in the chat box, this has been recorded and will be available on the APH YouTube channel pretty soon. Yes. Great. And we hope you sign up for another session. I was noticing there's a few open slots later in April and also in May. So we sure would love to have a part two or a part three <laughs> or five or six. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick response to Lorena's question um, about permissions. If you're just showing something directly to a child, you do not need permission to adapt it. What's tricky for us is if we post something on Paths to Literacy, then it's on the internet and that's or on the APH site for that matter. That's a whole different uh, kettle of fish or ball of twine or whatever you want to say. We, so we just have to be really careful about sharing something online. But with your student or with your child, you don't need to have permission to adapt something for personal use at home. No, and that's a great point, uh, Charlotte. Everything that I've done today um, were just strategies that I used um, when I was out as an itinerant TSVI in the in, in the world. <laughs> uh, before I answer any of the questions regarding the uh, uh, being able to obtain a light box, I'm going to let Cheryl announce what we're doing tomorrow. Of course. So thank you again, Adam. What a wonderful session. Thank you for all of you who have joined us. We have a few announcements as we close today, a couple more than usual. First of all, for the rest of this week, we have some different audiences we are trying to reach on our webinar series. So tomorrow we have staying home, making connections in the face of social distancing. This is part two of a, of a series. And I will say this is probably best geared for some of our older adolescent and teenage students. And that is with Kate Cadillac. Friday, we have a very special session that is geared to our birth to three uh, age group. So we have infant massage and we would love for you to share with your early start and also your um, early childhood programs that you might be working with and collaborating with on infant massage. Perhaps some of the audiences that we may not be reaching in the vision world would also be interested in this. And so if you could share it with your colleagues, we would very much appreciate that. Um, and a couple other announcements. TSBVI has been doing this wonderful series and I'm gonna share that with you just for a, a moment here and I'll paste the link in the chat window. But they're having coffee hour with TSBVI outreach. And so there's a number of topics. They meet every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if this is something that you would like to join, there is some information there also on the Paths to Literacy website. So I will post that in the chat window. The other one I wanted to share with you, where did you go? Um, APH is hosting a series of webinars. Today was the first one, Magnific Magnification for Students on the Go, and that was recorded. And so you'll see that archived mainly for low vision students. But there's another one for O&M students uh, or O&M teachers who might be out there, specialists, street crossings with no traffic control. So and if you try to register for that one, it uh, I have a 500 person room and we have actually maxed out our registration for that event at 500 people. It will be recorded, so you will be able to uh, catch it on the recording. All right, super, thank you. I am going to go ahead and paste that also in the chat window so that you're able to find those resources as well. That's it for all my announcements. Thank you for joining us today for where you are and what you're doing and taking a pause and a moment to be with us today. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we hope to see you again, if not tomorrow, another day soon. Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.